Hi, welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. I'm Mrs. Williams. I teach first grade in the Windsor C1 School District. That's in Imperial, Missouri. This is Mrs. Forth. Hi, everybody. I'm from the Rockwood School District. I'm excited to be here with you today as we learn a little bit about reading and math. So before we start, we really want to know where are you? Are you near the airport? Top Golf? Are you out at Six Flags? That's where I live. Yay! Are you near the Magic House? Closer to the zoo? Maybe you are close to the St. Louis Arch or the Mississippi River. Where I'm at, I'm a little bit south of St. Louis in Herculaneum near the Mississippi River. It looks like we have friends from all over St. Louis joining us today. Thanks for joining us, guys. Very exciting. Okay, let's go ahead and start with our welcome poem. I'm going to point to the words. Feel free to join along with me as I say I'm ready. Welcome, welcome, everyone. How are you today? We are so glad to be with you learning math and reading too. And speaking of how are you today, we need to do a zone check because before we get ready to learn each day, we check in on our body and brain. Really smart scientists that study brains know that happy, calm brains do the best learning. If you are in the green zone, that means that you are calm, you are happy, and you are ready to complete your work, help others, and reach your daily goals. And this is the hand signal. So if you are in green zone, show me you're green and good to go. If you are in the blue zone, you might be feeling a little slow and low today. You might need to draw a picture, get a hug, or think some happy thoughts to be ready to learn. Your hand signal will look like this. If you are in the yellow zone, you're maybe a little frustrated, anxious, or maybe just really excited in a good way, but not ready to learn yet. So you need to take some deep breaths, get a hug, or talk to an adult that can help you be ready. If you are in the red zone, you have flipped your lid, your hand the signal looks like this, and you're probably not learning with this right now. You're very angry or upset about something. You need to stop, get help from an adult, take some deep breaths, and check the size of your problem. So show me your hand signal. Are you green zone and good to go? I hope you are. If you are blue, yellow, or red, choose one of our strategies to help you get ready to learn. Are you guys ready to get started today? All right, before we start, let's do our room nine chant. Can you read this along with us? Okay. I am smart. smart. I, I am kind. kind. I am brave. brave. I am me. Ready for some reading fun? The other day we played a fun game called the robot game. If you were with me, do you remember how fun it was to slow down and think about the sounds in a word and talk like a robot? Yeah, in the robot game, I said a word and you guys turned it into robot language, didn't you? Like I said, bat, and you guys said, bat. Yeah, because slowing down and listening to all the sounds we hear in a word is going to make our reading and writing brain stronger. We're exercising our reading and writing muscles. So I thought maybe we could exercise those muscles a little bit more today. So this time, I have a new way for us to slow down and hear all the sounds in the word. We are gonna practice saying a word, and as you say each sound, I'm going to push my Lego counter into a box, okay? So I have three boxes here, which means there's gonna be three sounds in the words that we're gonna practice with today. Okay, are you ready to try it? Okay, the very first word I want you to say is rat. Say rat. Okay, now let's slow it down. You can talk like a robot. Ready? R-A-T. Did you get all three sounds in rat? Good job. Let's try another one. Okay, the next word is mad. Say mad. Let's see if we can hear three sounds in mad. Ready? Mm, ah, d. Good job. Okay, let's try another one. How about can? Like our friends from can land. They can. Hey, what do I do? What's the first one? K. 
A. Hmm. Can. Thanks. Good work, guys. I think you're ready for another one. How about tap? Say tap. Tap. Ready? A. Tap. Okay, how about one more? How about cash? Can you say cash? K. Good. Then what? K. A. Sh. Cash. You guys are really exercising your reading and writing muscles by practicing listening closely to all the sounds that you hear in a word, because that's also going to help you read and write those words. Yeah. Good work. Okay, the next activity I want to do is with our sight words. Remember, sight words are words that we hear in a snap. You got it. So we've been working on eight words together so far. That's a lot of words, isn't it? But what I love about it is these eight words are going to really help us read more words in our books and write more words in the stories that we're writing. Okay, I'm going to show you the word. We are going to do something a little different. Instead of just saying the word, we're going to say it, we're going to spell it, and we're going to write it. So if you have paper and pencil with you, go ahead and get that. If you don't, that's okay. We can write it on our hand or in the air. I'm going to actually do that with you this time so you can see what I mean, that we can practice writing words even if we don't have a piece of paper or pencil or something to write with. Okay, ready for the very first word? The first word is at. Say at. Now let's spell at, ready? A, T, at. Now we're gonna write it, okay? I'm gonna use my hand. Let's make an A and then a T. You try that. Make your A and your T. What's the word again, friends? At. Okay, next word. A, say it. A, and how do we spell the word A? A, no, this one's a fun one because it's just one letter. Hey, are you ready to write it? Hey, if you have something to write on, go ahead and write it. If not, write it in the air or write it on your hand. The word is A. Next word, C. Say the word. C, let's spell the word, S-E-E. -E. Are you ready to write it? Hey, S-E-E, -E. here I go, S-E-E. -E. Did you get both of those E's? Good job. Hey, next word, the next word is the. Say the, let's spell it. T H E the. Okay, time to write it. Get your pencil or your paper or your finger in your hand. Ready? T H E. The word is the. Great. All right, ready for another one? Look. Say the word. Look. Let's spell it. L O O K. The word is. Look, time to write it. L, oh yeah, that's a tall letter. Make sure you make it tall. O, O, K. Remember, you can do it in the air too if you don't have something to write with. Get those hands moving. Look, how about this one? Me, say me. Now let's spell the word M E, me. Write the word, M-E, good job. Next word, can, say the word. I can't hear you, can, spell the word, C-A-N. Now write the word, C-A-N. And last word. I, what's the word? I, spell the word. I, now write the word. 
Nice and tall, cross on top, across on the bottom. Good work. I know that you, you guys are gonna see these words in books and you're gonna know them in a snap. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is practice building some words. We know that our friends from Canland really were able to feed the Feed Me Monster because of you, because you were paying attention to how those words that he was eating had a certain sound in the middle. Do you remember the sound, those of you that were with me? Yeah, it was the A ah sound, the short vowel A sound. Everybody say A. Ah. Yeah, all of those words had A ah in the middle, didn't it? Okay, so what I have now are some letters that we're gonna use to build some words, okay? So I have the letter A, I have the letter D, I have the letter N, I have the letter S, and the letter T. Really quick, let's say the letter and the sound that it makes. A, A, D, D, N, N, S, T, T. Perfect. So we're gonna use all that we know about those letters and the sounds that they make to spell some words. Are you ready to build words with me? Okay, the very first word that I wanna build is at. Do you remember at? It is one of our sight words, you're right, at. What do I need to build at? A, what else? T, let's check our work, ready? At, at, good job. Okay, if I have at, I wanna change one letter to make it say an. Can you figure that out? Say at, now say an. What's different about those? Yeah, the beginning is the same, isn't it? They both have a, but the end changes. At, at, n. Uh, I'm using my robot language to help me figure this out. I told you that would come in handy. And what letter should this be? That should be an N. N. Okay, how about mm, and? Can you say and? And. Use your robot language. A N D. Oh, I heard something different at the end, did you? Yeah. A N D. And, d, d, what letter? A D. Let's check our work, okay? Ready? A, n, d, and, and. You did it. Okay, next word. Hmm, I'm gonna put all of them back. How about tan? Say tan. Now use your robot language, tan. What am I gonna need? Yell it out to me. A T, you hear a T? T, A, N, an A. T, A, N, and an N. Let's check, T, N, Ten. You did it. Thanks for your hard work. Okay, let's try another one, ready? Sat, sat. What am I gonna need for sat? Say it like a robot. What do you hear first? Right, s at an A. What do you hear at the end? S at, s at a T. Good work. Guess what? All of these letters actually spell one word. If I put them all together. Do you want to see? It's like a magic trick. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Keep them closed. Leave them closed. Dun, dun, dun. Open them. Look at how I used all five letters and I spelled a word. Do you want to see what the word is? Let's say it slowly. And. Well, I remember the and part from before. And let's see if we can add the beginning. St. St. And, st, and, stand, stand. You guys, we just built the word stand. Good work. 
Thank you so much for joining me. I think it's time for you to exercise your math muscles too. Are you ready to head off to Miss Williams? Have so much fun. See you next time. Thanks, Miss Forth. And thanks for teaching our friends. All right, guys, well, it's time for us to get moving on a little bit of math today. So we'll do some quick counting. Let's see how we're going to count today. Ooh, looks like we're spin counting. I hope we don't get too dizzy. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh boy, we gotta go all the 20. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh boy, I don't know about you, but I'm a little dizzy. I think we should just stay put to count backwards. Ready, here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Whew, good job, guys. Maybe not so much on the spinning next time, huh? All right, well, today, by the time we're done learning together, we'll be able to say, I can, you say it, compare numbers, you say it, to 20. Whew! Yes, you will. We've got this, guys. So compare. What does that word mean? When we say we're going to compare numbers to 20, it means that we're going to kind of check and see if their value is more or less or the same. So our word is compare. And that just means we're going to see which number is bigger or greater, which number is less, or if they're equal. Speaking of equals, there's a, there's a word for equals, but there's also a symbol for equal. And this is what the equals sign looks like. We use it in our addition and subtraction problems too. So we'll be seeing an equal sign today maybe as well. Equal means that our two numbers are the same. So everybody, equal, the same, same thing. Those are two words that mean the same thing. Now I happen to know that Every time I teach kiddos how to compare numbers, that my friend the greater gator shows up at some point. So don't be alarmed if you see an alligator, move it on in. He only eats numbers. And let me tell you this about that. He only eats the greater number. Greater gator is an alligator that can only get by eating the biggest number. I don't know why it is, but that's all he ever eats. So he won't eat you, he won't eat me, he'll only eat the greater number. Do you remember what greater means? Greater means that it's the most, it's the biggest, it's the highest number. So let's get to comparing some numbers. We have our friend Zero the Hero. Now, if we are comparing our friend zero to the number seven, which number is greater? Is zero or is seven more? Hmm, let's think about that. Which one would be bigger? Which one would be more jelly beans? Would you rather have zero or would you rather have <gasps> I told you our greater gator would show. Greater gator, what are you doing here? He always comes by, he just can't help it. When he sees a bigger number, he has to eat it. And you notice that the greater's, greater gator's mouth always points to the bigger number. So that means that seven is greater than zero. Or we could say zero is less than seven. You try it. Zero is less than seven. Good job. 
let's go ahead and move these guys out of the way and compare some other numbers. Now, your job is going to be to write the greatest number. I want you to write down the greatest number and then write down the smaller number. And I want you to put a greater gator on your paper. Our next number, do you recognize this guy? What number is it, guys? Say it in your best pirate voice. Arr, it's 11, matey. How about this one? <gasps> yeah, it's six. Right now, write the greater number, then put in the smaller number, then add your greater gator. Ready? Boom! Does yours look like this? Is your greater gator getting ready to chomp that number 11? Get your hands ready and do your gator chomp. Yep, 11 is the greater number here. So if 11 was the greater number, what was six? Six is less than 11. All right, do you recognize that number from all of our number practice? Yep, that one's number 13. And who is this? That's our friend 15. Write the greater number, then write the number that is less. Then put in your greater gator. Oh, here he comes. Did you make your greater gator chomp 15? Yes, because you would rather have 15 Skittles than 13 Skittles. If your brother is 15 and you're 13, he is older. 15 is greater than 13. We could also say 13 is less than 15. Let's get these guys on out of the way. What's that number? And this guy? Go ahead and write the greater number. Write the smaller number or the number that is less. And put in your greater gator. Which number did your gator chomp? Did you say 10? Yeah. Greater gator would be chomping 10 because 10 is greater than one. We know that 10 is way up here on our number line and one is way back there, a little old one all by itself. So 10 is the greater number, one is less, or one is less than 10. All right, let's get our one and our 10 on out of there. Let's try our next number. All right, did you write your greater number? Did you write the number that is less? And go ahead and put in your greater gator. Which number did your greater gator chomp? Was it 18? Yeah. Great job, guys. 18 is greater than 14. But we could say it the other way. Do you remember how to do it? 14 is less than 18. Great job. Now I wanna show you a little something funny that happens to Greater Gator when he sees two numbers that are the same. Let's just say that my numbers 
happen to be twins. I was five years old and so was my best friend. Do you know what happens to Greater Gator when he sees two numbers that are exactly the same? He swims left, he swims right, and then he just gets confused. He doesn't know what to do. He closes his mouth and it makes what symbol? It makes an equal sign. He doesn't know what to do. He can only eat the greater number. So Greater Gator presses his lips together and they look just like an equal sign. It's so funny, we can confuse him. So remember that if you have two numbers that are twins, they are equal. Greater Gator can't chomp either one because he only eats the biggest numbers. Good job, guys. Thumbs up and a wiggle if you like hanging out with Greater Gator. So do I, he's such a silly guy. That's about all the time we have to learn together today, but I want you to remember to use our rules during your day today to have a happy green zone day. Uh, remember, rule number one is be safe. Wash up those hands and keep your hands, feet, and things to yourself so that you and everybody else feel safe and happy. Rule number two is be respectful. Use nice words in a nice voice no matter who you're talking to. Rule number three is be responsible. That means that you're going to take care of yourself and your things. You're going to do your work, uh, your schoolwork, and do your chores around the house to help out. So make great choices, and that will make you proud and happy inside today. I hope you have a fantastic day, and Ms. Forth and I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Bye! Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.